Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, worshippers of all ages, welcome to YouTube. My name is C Raptor, and today we're continuing our first look at the new forthcoming Pan Asian cruiser line by having a look at Tier 7's Shumpan. Shumpan? I'm mispronouncing it, and I'm sorry. Um, this is going to be an area, particularly in this line, that I'm not going to do well with, so mock me in the comments. It's cool. I'm used to it. I've been doing this a long time. So, as we move, move, move from uh, uh, the, the kind of HMS Dido clone at Tier 6 up to what amounts to, if you want the really short, I don't want to watch this video version, this is basically a USS Atlanta clone up here at Tier 7. There are some tweaks. There's some changes. Um, I, I, I almost get, go so far as to say she's more like Flint than Atlanta. Uh, you can kind of get that sense right away by seeing that she only has six main turrets rather than uh, the, the hip turrets that, that Atlanta, uh, Atlanta wields. Uh, Flint doesn't have those, so this is probably a little more like Flint, but let's, um, let's, uh, let's kind of dive in and, and see what's going on here. So, survivability. 26,400 hit points. And you should be used to this song by now. Say it with me, everybody. Worst in tier. Yes, indeed. Now, the previous crown holder for this worst in tier was the ship I was just comparing it to, USS Flint. Shumpan here has 200 hit points less than Flint. So, it's not a massive, oh my gosh, this ship is the worst by a wide margin. No, it's not. But it is the worst. Um, these ships, obviously, just the entire line, going to be pretty fragile. Not a thing. Um, you'll also notice there is no torpedo protection value in this box. Zero. So just, you know, keep that in mind. Also historical, right? Atlanta and Flint have no, have no torpedo protection. Armor. <laughs> I made it, I made it funny. This ship has no armor. Um, 13 millimeter extremities is most of what you're going to get. The quote unquote belt you have is 89. Um, yeah, don't get shot. That's bad. That's really bad for the longevity of these ships. And, and again, that's a problem you're going to see throughout the line. <laughs> You know, we like to mock Königsberg and, and Nuremberg and the German cruiser line for being obligatory exploding cruiser, right? These ships are going to blow up better than almost any other cruisers in the game. They just have, they're so lightly armored, they have so little armor. Um, if you can spot one, and that will be the challenge, they are fairly fairly stealthy, uh, and get some battleship shells or some heavy cruiser shells downrange on it, he's going to blow up good. Maneuverability and concealment, 32.5 knots, 610 on the turning circle, 7.2 on the rudder shift. Um, this, this ship is a I mean, as an Atlanta, if you've driven an Atlanta, you more or less know what you're getting into. I will say the rudder shift is a little better. Um, but Atlanta's issues, you know, when you try to handle Atlanta, particularly at low speeds, her problems aren't around her rudder shift. Her problem, uh, problems are around her acceleration and her turning circle radius. 610 sounds great. And honestly it is, but this ship is so long and narrow. She really does struggle to make some corners on occasion. So if you've driven in Atlanta, and Atlanta is one of the oldest premiums in World of Warships, so odds are by now you, you possibly own one or have driven one somewhere, you know, got one for a rental, who knows? You, you got an idea what you're getting into. 10.6 de surface detection you see there in the box, totally naked, no camo. Full stealth rig does get this ship down to 9.3 detection on the surface. That is not quite best in tier because HMS Belfast the original Tier 7 Premium HMS Belfast that's on the naughty list and can't be sold still beats this ship out. However, she is the best of the remaining lot. Um, she knocks Munkin off this off this uh, the, this pedestal by uh, by about 100 meters. Um, she's still a little... And trails Atlanta. Uh, I mean, she's ahead of Atlanta and Flint by about 300 meters. So she is fairly stealthy. Um, that's, again, this is the, the kind of thing you're going to see throughout the line. So keep that in mind. They are hard to detect. And if you're a destroyer, once you run into one, you're really, you're really unfortunately, uh, wishing you hadn't. Artillery. Chupon's main battery is comprised of, just like Flint in Atlanta, six or more, in Atlanta's case, of the ubiquitous 5-inch um, 38. These 5-inch 38 guns were manufactured literally by the hundreds uh, in World War II in the United States. They were primary battery here for these cruisers, for the gearing class destroyers. They were secondary batteries on most American heavy cruisers and most American battleships of the war. Any, any ship that got a refit, basically, and didn't have these, congratulations, you got them now. So these guns are pretty good, very quick firing. Uh, they tend to be very quick firing, and they, they are dual purpose, so you get a lot of good flak and AA work out of them as well. Now, one thing that Schumpond has uh, kind of a knock against her here, the, the reload on the Atlanta on Atlanta and Flint is around 5 seconds. Flint, I think, is 5.1. Atlanta is a little less than that, like 4 inch, 4.8, something like this. 
Shumpan, you see here, 6.3. So her reload is about 20% worse than Flint, the ship that I'm kind of comparing it to in terms of firepower. That's going to feel bad. You're going to notice this. Okay, you're going to notice this. If you've played Atlanta, you've played Flint, you think, ah, oh, that's, that's only a second. I won't notice. Yeah, I think you will. I think you will. You get used to pushing that button and holding it down or, or salvoing a destroyer very quickly off the board with those ships. And this ship's just not going to do it quite as quickly. I think, this is speculative, I think this is um, a nod to the fact that the ship comes with smoke. And yes, I realize that Flint does as well. But in general, as we all know by now, if you're used to playing World of Warships, players do not enjoy playing against HE spamming smoke clouds. Okay, And that's essentially what a lot of this line is going to do. It's one of the reasons the range is kind of gimped. And you see that there. Main battery range, 12.7. Yeah, yeah, that's worse than tier by a runaway margin. Like, big. Um, so, I well, it's not... <laughs> This is where it gets weird, right? Atlanta and Flint have had their ranges tweaked quite a bit over the last year, uh, particularly after some of the AF, the, the changes to the commander skills. Atlantis is now 13.3, okay? Flint's is now 12.4. So technically, Flint is worst in tier. Um, but again, Shumpan here, not, not winning any awards for this, right? She's technically got a few hundred meters more range. But as far as tech tree ships goes, yeah, she's easily worst in tier. She's blowing away this category by a pretty notable margin. So... You're going you're gonna to have to use that stealth and that smoke and a lot of island cover. Work the ship in close to where it can be useful. That's pretty much it. Other than that, these are Atlanta guns, right? It's the same It's the same guns you're getting off Gearing's main battery, off Atlanta and Flint. Um, you know, these these American shells that that drop on parachutes at long range, but do really good work against lighter units at close closer uh, closer quarters. One other thing worth noting, the dispersion calculations between this ship and and Atlanta and Flint are not the same. That dispersion ellipse you're seeing there, 121 meters, it's larger than it should be. Atlanta has 13.3 kilometers of range and has a smaller dispersion ellipse than this. So I didn't look at Sigma values. I tend not to on cruisers because usually it's just a universal 2.0 for cruisers. That's just how Wargaming does it. But you might notice a slight change in the dispersion. I doubt you will. Six meters at, you know... 13 kilometers or whatever, you're probably not going to notice. But just to keep that in mind, there is a small difference there between the main batteries. Torpedoes, we've been singing this song for a bit. We've got a deep water torpedoes. Atlanta here moves up to a single quad from the single triples that we've seen up to this point. So she's got four tubes on each side. Um, the torpedo range you see there is 9.5 kilometers in port. This was recently announced in a dev blog to be buffed out to 10 and a half. So she's getting a little extra range. Um, these are a little on the slow side, which feels kind of bad. Uh, 59, 59 knots there, but they did lower the detection radius accordingly to, um, you know, 0 0.7 uh, kilometers. That means that, they're, again, the, opposing, the opponent's reaction time um, to these torpedoes coming in, a little less than five seconds. So you get about the same reaction time. And there's a higher alpha on these, I think, than the ones that we were seeing down at tier five and six. So that's nice. And they reload. 90 seconds is pretty good. Like, you want to try and get work out of these torpedoes. This is one of the real advantages of this ship. And again, even though the gap has narrowed, you have more torpedo range than you have you have detection radius. So you can get some work out of these if you put yourself in a position to. She does come with depth charges. Two racks, eight bombs and a charge, 1,700 damage a pop. I mean, eh, you know, whatever. Um, I, I had a little rant in the previous video about, about depth charges, and I still kind of feel that way. I will say that, uh, you know, this is one difference that she does have from Atlanta and Flint in that the American depth charges hit harder than the Pan-Asian ones. These are these little 1,700 damage a pop ones don't hit all that hard. So, you know, you got to land a bunch of them on target to really make an impact. One thing we do want to talk about is AA because Atlanta and Flint definitely have pretty solid AA suites. Atlanta back in the day under the old RTS carrier system was well known as being a no-fly zone. That ship with the flak, you push the button and man, planes would just bloody melt. It was amazing. She's a little less good as she used to be, but she can still do some good work as you probably saw, I believe, earlier today on the channel. No, tomorrow. Tomorrow on the channel, you'll see a fun Atlanta replay uh, where I got to shred planes and it was glorious and wonderful. Um, but yeah, five flak puffs, 1470. That's basically typical of what you see out of the other two ships. Uh, the same, more or less. And then continuous damage here. Um, the rest of hers is all in the middle ring coming on the back of the 40 millimeter Bofors. Now, this is something, this, it's weird, right? We basically now have three Atlanta class ships in the game. And um, 
they all have slightly different AA suites, which is really strange. Um, Flint's is really good. This is where it starts to get weird. You'd think with Atlanta's extra hip turrets, um, she'd have more AA. She doesn't. Her, she has a better long range aura, but her mid range aura isn't as good. Flint drops the hip turrets, same as Chumpon here, and um, picks up more mid range aura at the sacrifice of a little bit of long range aura. The bottom line is, is that um, Shumpan's AA falls squarely in between uh, Atlanta's and Flint's in terms of raw DPS. In terms of raw DPS, Flint outdamages this thing. Um, Atlanta has less. She's kind of in the middle, right? Almost splitting the splitting the difference. And uh, she's she's going to eat planes pretty good, I think. Especially once you push the defensive fire button, which is one of her consumables. We'll go have a look at that in a minute. Let's go peak consumables. Come on, here we go. So yeah, like you've been seeing up to this point, you know, we started at tier five, we had damage control um, and smoke. We added our damage control and defensive fire. Anyway, we added we added one of these two at tier six and the, the, the consumables list here, same as it was down at tier six, damage control party because we're a ship in World of Warships. Smoke generator, Pan-Asian smoke, 70 second dispersion, 100 second reload, and then standard defensive fire, nothing fancy here. So, um, yeah, she's a tweaked Atlanta, basically. I mean, that's 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 kind of what you're getting when you look at this ship. I like the idea of it, and and I there are some interesting design choices being made in here that I think mean that she'll play a little different. You know, Flint Flint has long range torpedoes, nine ish kilometers. I think they're Benson torpedoes um, that she can get some good work out of. But these, I think, for starters, they are going to be longer range. You saw that ten and change, um, but. That and the smoke, uh, those deepwater torps, I think, can be really, really mean. Um, I really have always, always liked the deepwater torpedoes on the Pan Asian line. It's just that the the the, tor the destroyer hulls most of those just torpedoes get fixed to aren't all that amazing. So, yeah, here I think I'm seeing I'm seeing things I like. I'm a, I'm a light cruiser guy anyway, right? Like I'm automatically going to be look at these ships and go, yes, please, I want to try this because cruiser. Um, but I haven't. Uh, I'm really liking what I'm seeing so far. I'm really liking what I'm seeing so far. So I'm looking forward to giving these sh uh, ships a shot once we're able to play them. Certainly once we're able to play them on stream. I'm not sure when they're coming. I've seen some comments in the in YouTube. People are like, when are these ships coming out? I have no idea. I don't think they've announced when they're coming to early access. My suspicion is sometime in early 2022. Anyway, guys, there's our first look at Tier 7's Shumpan. Hope you enjoyed that. Wash your hands, be safe, and I'll catch you next time.